Hello. In this video, we are going to look at the wave function solutions for the one-dimensional particle in the box. In this graph, we see the solution for the n equals 1 quantum number. Here is the wave function solution for n equals 2. Notice that it has a node where the wave function crosses 0 at L over 2. Here is the wave function solution for n equals 3. Notice that there are two nodes. And also notice that one wavelength is completed in 2 thirds L. Here is the solution for n equals 4 with the three nodes clearly labeled. Note that for any wave function solution, there will be n minus 1 nodes. Here we see the wave function solutions for n equals 1 in black, n equals 2 in red, and n equals 3 in blue-green. Note that as the n number increases, so do the number of nodes, as well as the curvature of the wave functions. As the wave function curvature increases, so does the kinetic energy. Here are displayed the wave function solutions all the way from n equals 1 up to n equals 6. The wave function solutions to the Schrodinger equation are eigenfunctions of the Hamiltonian operator. And since they have different eigenvalues, they are orthogonal to each other. We are going to look at three cases to demonstrate this. In the first case, we look at the n equals 1 and n equals 2 solutions. The black line shows the product psi 2 star psi 1 and with gray we've shaded the area under the curves. Areas above the x-axis are considered to be positive and those below the x-axis are considered negative. And we notice that the shapes are identical for the regions above and below the x-axis. So therefore when added together they add up to exactly equal zero thereby demonstrating that the two eigenfunctions truly are orthogonal to each other. Here we compare the n equals 1 and n equals 3 eigenfunctions. The product of the two functions is the black line curve and we shaded the area under the curve. The positive region above the x-axis, a negative region below the x-axis. Again, though it's not obvious, the two regions exactly balance thereby equaling zero. Last but not least, we look at the n equals 2 and n equals 3 eigenfunctions. The product of the two functions is the area shown in gray, and we've broken it up into two different types of regions, one shaded gray, one shaded dark gray. And we notice that the areas above and below the x-axis balance for the light gray regions, and they balance exactly for the dark gray regions. Therefore, the areas under the curve are equal to zero, and the two functions are demonstrated visually to be orthogonal to each other. The probability density psi star psi gives us the likelihood of finding a particle at a particular location. Here we see the graph of the probability density for the n equals 1 case, showing that the particle is more likely to be in the central region of the box than to be near the walls, which is much different from the classical case where the particle would be equally likely to be at any particular point inside the box. 
if we integrate the probability density from L over 3 to 2L over 3, that will give us the likelihood of finding the particle in the middle third of the box. In the n equals 1 case, we determine that's about equal to 0 0.069. We can do that either by direct integration or we can use a numerical integration method. Here is a graph of the probability density for the n equals 2 solution. Notice that it has two maxima in the center of the left half of the box and in the center of the right half of the box. However, there is a node exactly at L over 2, so there is absolutely no possibility of finding the particle in the absolute center of the box, which is a completely opposite situation to the n equals 1 case where the particle could be found in the center of the box, and in fact, that's where it was most likely to be detected. Now, if we integrate for n equals 2 between L over 3 and 2L over 3, the area under the curve has dropped to 0 0.195, meaning that it's much less likely to find the particle in the middle third of the box than either the case for n equals 1 or for a classical particle where the probability of finding it in the middle third of the box would be exactly one third. Here is displayed the probability density for the n equals 4 state. The two vertical black lines delineate where L over 3 and 2L over 3 are, so we can see the middle third of the box. For the n equals 4 state, we note the three nodes, including one exactly at L over 2, the middle third is shaded in light gray, and we find that its total area is 0 0.414. Therefore, the probability of finding the particle in the middle third when it's in the n equal 4 state is about 41.4%. We thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.